Okay, um, this is quite a story and pretty good insight as to the functionings of uh, expansion chambers and the options available <clears throat> because we're not just stuck with just one thing. This right here shows the typical diffuser wave and baffle wave. It's called a diffuser wave because it's the, the suction wave coming from the diffuser. And this is the, the pressure wave coming from the baffle. What happens is that, is that pressure, uh, that exhaust pulse comes here and it expands. In this section right here, it creates a suction which reflects back and goes back to the engine. And then as that pulse comes over here, it gets compressed and that higher pressure creates a pressure wave that goes back to the engine. Okay, um, the, there's an advantage and disadvantage to each one of these return waves. The advantage to a diffuser wave is that anywhere between transfer opening and transfer close it will aid in the intake of fuel and air into the crankcase and through the transfers into the engine. But when it gets to this section right here between transfer closing and exhaust closing it's going to interfere with the, the process because what you want is that piston arises here you want a pressure wave right here to keep the gas and air from going out as the piston raises you don't want it to squeeze that to go out so the baffle wave which your ideal is right here the baffle wave in this case it's increasing pressure right until a maximum of exhaust closing which is perfect because that piston arises it gets more and more and more as it squeezes this more and more and it keeps it in there so you've got more fuel air charge to burn. Okay, so um, that diffuser wave, like I said, it, it aids in the intake, okay? But when that diffuser wave gets all the way over here past uh, transfer closing at high RPM, it does the opposite of what you want. You want that baffle wave to be there, that it's already gone past. Now the diffuser wave's there, and it's going to really rob power by sucking the gas and air into the exhaust pipe. Okay, so that's the benefit and the, the disadvantage of the diffuser wave. Now the baffle wave is the opposite. Its advantage is here, at uh, peak power RPM, it is doing exactly this. It is raising in pressure to match exhaust closing. And uh, like I already explained, it keeps the charge there and there, therefore gives you a stronger uh, combustion. Its disadvantage at lower RPM is when it's between transfer closing and transfer opening. Anywhere along here, it's going to interfere with the intake process. So what you get is, as the RPMs increase, uh, you have less power until it gets in this area here. And so you got the typical two-stroke. So it's like a light switch. Nothing and then everything. Okay, so that's the advantage and disadvantage of the baffle wave. You can get rid of that baffle wave. It is optional. And carting pipes do just that because a lot of the carts are one speed and they need as much mid-range power as possible. They don't want that baffle wave there. So they get rid of it by exchanging in the normal baffle section with something like this. A perforated baffle going into another closed section. Hopefully it's, it's bigger than what I've drawn here. And you can even uh, stuff it with um, uh, what do you call that? Um, 
that scrubby stuff for the kitchen. Um, I don't know what you call it. That's what happens when you've been out of the States for like 20 years. You start losing your English. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what you do. Because because the, the wave hit, hits right here, instead of being pressured, the pressure bleeds off into this section right here. And then it and then it, as it travels along this, it will become pressured and want to bounce back, but most of it will hit this and go back and forth here and won't go back to the engine. So this is a way of greatly reducing the baffle wave, maybe to like one-third or one-fourth of what it used to be. So you don't get that high RPM hit, but you have a lot better um, mid-range power. Let me show you how I learned this for my example. I had this bike and it had a very linear power band. I'm like, is this a two-stroke? What the hell? And so this exhaust pipe weighed like 50 pounds. And I'm like, the hell with that. I'm going to make my own. So I just I took it apart and I cut it apart. And I, I luckily cut it right, right along here. What I found is that about an inch farther back in was just a plate. It didn't have a baffle, it just had a plate. And then it had a hole that, that let the exhaust go into the baffle section back here. This is my pipe that I made and, and put on. So, so the stock was equivalent to this. It had a, a plate, it had a hole, and then it had a baffle section. So what, what they did is that plate still causes a baffle wave, but what they did is they made this really long belly section, and what that does is it moves that baffle wave so far over here that it that it doesn't really come into play until like really low RPM, which you hardly use, you know, like maybe 2,000 RPM. So that baffle wave's gone just because they, they just moved it, uh, moved it too far away from the diffuser wave. So, yeah, this is, this is what I, I, I learned from that. And, and I tried different uh, normal baffle sections and even, you know, not so normal ones. And I went through about four pipes before I realized that Suzuki had this figured out, what was that, 30 years ago. This is the ideal pipe for a one-speed bike. Well, the Suzuki wasn't a one-speed bike. It was a four-speed. But being a four-speed, it had a way longer interval, way longer RPM range between one shift to another than a five-speed or a six-speed bike. And so they took care of that problem with this type pipe. Very long baffle. And that's that's just an option that's that's available. But of course Suzuki never told us what was inside their pipe. <laughs> it takes fools like me cutting pipes apart to figure things like this out. So yeah, uh now, where are we? Okay, so you can reduce the baffle wave by perforating the pipe or making a really long baffle and to make up for some of that length, just use a plate instead of a, instead of a baffle or just a really steep, really steep baffle cone, which is what I did on mine. Either way, it's the same thing, basically. So, yeah, um, I don't know mo what more to say about it. Uh, 
Let me explain a little bit about the diffuser wave. It's when it hits at, at bottom dead center, that's when it has the best boost for the intake. So the piston goes down, it lets the exhaust go out, which it causes a, a sound wave, which is really travels really fast. And when it reaches this section, it creates, it creates a suction, which returns a suction wave back. And by that time, the transfers are open. So that suction wave hits the cylinder and it will help draw in more gas and air through the transfers into the combustion area. It will open this reed valve, which normally is shut. When that piston is going down, it's creating some pressure in the crankcase, which is being relieved by the flow up through the transfers, but still, there's no suction here to open that reed valve. But when that suction wave hits, there is, and that will open and more will come in. So you're getting more uh, intake charge into the combustion area. So when that that piston finally comes up and closes the exhaust port, what you're going to have here is is a, a mix that is a lot closer to 100% being intake charge, which is the ideal for the best combustion. Normally it's a, it's a certain mix between exhaust and uh, intake charge, but the, the majority is intake charge. So yeah, that's what the diffuser wave does. And so um, you can see, let's say if the, the peak of this bike is 9,500 RPM, peak power. From about 8,000 RPM on down, the diffuser wave is king. And that baffle wave is kind of in the way here. Um, at really low RPM, you, you have time to compensate for the baffle wave, so it makes less of a difference. But um, at the higher RPM, well, above half of the RPM, it does make a difference. So, yeah, um, options, right. What would happen if you just had a straight pipe? You would still have a diffuser wave because when that when that pressure comes out that pipe it expands right here which causes a return suction wave so if you use a straight pipe you've got to have um, normally fairly long yeah you can't it, it's not a good idea to have a short straight pipe so I think that's about all I want to say on the subject. Yeah, long belly. Or uh, perforated uh, baffle cone. Get rid of the baffle wave. It gives you more mid-range uh, power. It reduces the, the peak power because you don't have that the baffle wave supercharging like it normally does and so yeah you know you, you lose this to gain that and on my on my Suzuki it made all the difference in the world it was a great street bike it was just a 100 it's a 100 cc four speed but with this design of pipe it had nice even power. It was a it was a joy to ride. So for um, four speed bikes, one speed, like karting, like uh, motorized bikes, the the long belly or the uh, the perforated baffle is the way to go. Okay, my friends. Thanks for watching.